OpenAI, where's the GPT-4 vision model you promised us? Where you could take a photo from your notebook and make a website from it? Are we ever gonna get it? Well, actually, we don't really need to wait for them anymore. Because now we have mini GPT-4. Hello humans, my name is Kenyo and Overload, and yes, you heard it right, Mini GPT-4 is the open source version of the OpenAI GPT-4 visual model that we were promised like a month ago, where you could upload an image and do a bunch of cool stuff. And I gotta tell you, after trying it out, I was super impressed. So in this video, let's take a look at what this open source project has under the hood, how it works, what can you do with it, and how you can try it out yourself right now for free. So let's go. So what is Mini GPT-4? Well, Mini GPT-4 is simply a multi multimodal local LLM that can understand and generate text based on uploaded images. It's created using two parts, a visual encoder called Bleep2 and a language model called Vicuña which I made a video on this a few days ago. So the way it works is that first you're gonna upload an image, and then it's gonna use Bleep2 to analyze your image, understand the context behind it, and then once you're gonna start asking questions about the image, it's gonna use the local Vicuña model to answer you. So exactly like the GPT-4 visual model demo that we saw a month ago. Except that this time it does not use GPT-4, but can potentially be used on your local computer using the Vicuña model. And all of that for absolutely free. Okay, so that's great and all, but what exactly can you do with it? What can you use it for? Well, there is actually a lot of application for this technology, and I'm gonna show it to you right now. Oh, and also, if you want to try it out yourself, you can click the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on this page, and here you're gonna see a bunch of links. These are all the links that you can use to try the online demo, and I highly suggest that you try each one of those out, because there are currently a lot of traffic on this website. And once you've clicked on one of the links, you're gonna arrive on this page, where here is where you're gonna upload your image, and here is where you're gonna have your conversation. Okay, so now that the Say, let's actually try this out. And I'm gonna start with something like this, which is basically a funny image of a monkey wearing lipstick. <sighs> Monkey. So now if I click upload and start chat, so there you go, now the image is uploaded. And now if I ask MiniGPT4 what is funny about this image, MiniGPT4 answers me that this image shows a monkey with red lipstick on its mouth, looking at the camera with a playful expression, it is a cute and funny image. Which is absolutely correct. And then if I ask but why is it funny, MiniGPT4 answers me that it is funny because it is unexpected to see a monkey with lipstick on its mouth. It is an unusual and playful image that is likely to elicit a smile or a laugh from the viewer. The monkey's expression and the red lipstick adds to the humor of the image. And then for some reason he also gave me like this image of this woman putting on makeup for some reason, which I didn't even know that he could do. This is actually the first time that I see MiniGPT4 answer me with an image, so that's actually pretty cool. And then if I ask, how do you think this monkey got lipstick on its mouth? It answers me, it is likely that the monkey got lipstick on its mouth as a result of human intervention. Perhaps someone applied the lipstick to the monkey's mouth as a form of play or as a prank. It is also possible that the monkey fought the lipstick and applied it to its own mouth. Regardless of how it happened, the image is still funny because it is unexpected and playful. Which as you can see, the answers that you get are actually really really good. Like the model is really super smart. Mini GPT-4 very easily understood what this image is in great detail and not only can understand the humor behind it and explain why it's funny how this image came to be and all of that in great detail. I mean, this is really super impressive. And this is the kind of thing that Mini GPT-4 can do. It can very precisely analyze an image, understand the context behind it, and then partake in a conversation about this image. And you can use this tech for a lot of cool things. For example, if I upload this image of pancakes, and then if I ask, how can I make this without any additional precision, and I press enter, and just like that, I get an entire recipe on how to make pancakes. I mean, this is insane. This is really, really cool. Can you imagine the possibility for this tech, where in the future you could upload an image of a meal, and in a few seconds you get a perfect recipe for that meal? I mean, this is just amazing. And then what's also super super cool is that if I say that I want blueberries in that, it's actually gonna rewrite and create a brand new recipe, or at least a very similar recipe since this is pancakes, but this time it's gonna add blueberry to the recipe. And then here's another thing, let's say for example that I don't have any eggs in my fridge. Well, again, me GP rewrite me a brand new vegan recipe that doesn't use any eggs, which is so cool. So just imagine you upload an image of a meal that you like, 
and in a few seconds you get a recipe for that meal and that you can then ask the assistant to modify the recipe based on the ingredients that you have or don't have in the fridge. I mean this is absolutely nuts. This is so cool. And again this is only the beginning. I cannot even imagine how powerful it will be in a few years. Okay so what else can you do with it? Well let's say for example that you have an Instagram account and you just have no idea what kind of description you can make for your photo. So for example let's say that you've been in vacation in Paris and you took a beautiful photo of the Eiffel Tower and then you're simply gonna ask me in GPT-4, write me a short caption of that photo from my Instagram account with the appropriate hashtags. And I get something like this. The Eiffel Tower stands tall and proud in the heart of Paris, France. Its iconic iron structure and ornate decoration have made it one of the most recognizable landmarks in the world. The tower was originally built as a temporary structure for the 1889 World's Fair, but it has since become a beloved symbol of the city and a must-see for visitors from around the globe, etc, etc. And then at the end, of course, you get a bunch of hashtags. So yeah, there you go, just like that. In a few seconds, you get a short caption for that photo that you can use on your Instagram account or any social media. So if you don't have any ideas of what kind of description text you can input, well, you can definitely try this little trick. Okay, so for the next example, let's say that you have an e-commerce store and you are trying to sell these kinds of cute headphones with these little bunny ears. Well, one thing that you can do is to write something like, we sell these cute headphones, please write an ad about them. And we get something like this, introducing our new pin cat ear headphones. These headphones are perfect for anyone who loves cats and wants to show off their feelings inside. The headphones are made of high quality materials and feature comfortable ear pads that fit snugly on your ears. The headphones are also equipped with a microphone so you can take calls or check with friends while listening to your favorite music or podcasts. The headphones are compatible with all major devices including smartphones, tablets and laptops. They're also lightweight and easy to carry around, making them perfect for travel or outdoor activities. So why wait? Get your pin cat ear headphones today and start showing off your feline side. So yeah, there you go. With just one single image, you can write a full ad automatically. So if you are for example running an e-commerce store or just like a brand in general, you can very easily create an ad from just one single image of your product. So that's really super cool. Now mini GPT-4 is very smart and can easily recognize people or characters from an image, even when these are fictional characters. So for example, if I upload an image of Goku and Vegeta and I ask who are the people in the image, it answers me that the image shows two characters from the Dragon Ball Z anime series. The character on the left is Goku, the main protagonist on the series and the character on the right is Vegeta, Goku's arch nemesis. Both characters are known for their powerful abilities and their rivalry throughout the series. Now unfortunately for this example, Mini GPT kind of mixed the two characters together because this character on the right is definitely Goku and the character on the left is Vegeta. So it's definitely not perfect, but it's still kind of very impressive that Mini GPT can actually recognize fictional characters. You know, for example, I use another character this time it's Luffy from One Piece, and I ask, what can you tell me about this character? It answers me by saying that this character is from the anime series One Piece, which follows the adventures of Monkey D. Luffy and his crew as they travel across the seas in search of the legendary One Piece treasure. The character in the image is wearing a straw hat and a serious expression on his face, which is absolutely perfect. It is a perfect explanation of the anime series, of the character, what he's wearing, and even his entire expression, which is very, very impressive because being able to distinguish a human character from a photo and a drawing of a fictional character, these are two different things. And the latter is definitely way harder to do. So the fact that it can do it and with such precision is actually very, very, very impressive. So that's really super cool. Now it's not exactly a practical example, you can't really do much with this, but I still thought that this was pretty cool. And finally, for the last example, I want to try out the demo that they show in the GPT-4 presentation, where they took a picture of a notebook that represented the sketch of a website, and then asked GPT-4 to create a brand new website from that sketch. And this is exactly what I'm gonna try to do here. Now I'm sure it's not gonna be perfect, but I still want to try it out. So what I did is that on a notebook, I simply created something like this, where I wrote a website by K, then in the middle I put something like a joke one, and then a punchline, and then if I write something like, write a brief HTML, JavaScript, CSS, 
CSS code to turn this mockup into a colorful website where joke 1 is replaced by a real joke. So now if I press enter, and I get something like this, which... Wait, did, did that work? Wait, did that work? Did I actually get a website? Okay, wait, I'm, I'm gonna try it out. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I was not expecting this. This is not part of the, the video. This is me literally trying this out right now. So I'm gonna paste the code and save the file. Then I'm gonna launch it. I mean... I mean, yeah, it's not perfect. I mean, the CSS code is kinda, you know, there is a problem, but I think I can solve it very easily. If I just do this, style here, then style here, save. And now if I refresh the page, oh, well, I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, it's, I mean, that's very impressive. I mean, it did not follow exactly my sketch, but it did create the website though, with the joke punchline, with the joke right here, and then the punchline in green, which is, I mean, yeah, it's kind of impressive. I mean, was it luck? Okay, so I think there's something going on here. So I'm gonna try another example. So I created a new mockup, and I want to see if, without any indication, if MiniGPT can understand the mockup of my website. So I'm simply gonna write something like, write a brief HTML JavaScript CSS code to turn this mockup into a colorful website with a change background color button that when pressed will change the color of the background to a random color. So I'm very curious to see what I'm gonna get. And I get something like this, which actually I, I can already see something that is very interesting is that it understood my writing because here I wrote a website by K and I see here that it wrote a website by K. So wow, I'm actually, I'm super impressed. It was actually able to understand my writing. So yeah, that that's that's pretty cool. I mean, that's pretty cool already because I have a terrible handwriting. But now if I take the code and I paste it here and already there is a few problems with the code. So I'm going to help it a little bit with the CSS, although I shouldn't, but it's easy to fix. And now if I launch it, I get something like this, which I mean, yeah, not perfect, but and I'm pretty sure that the yeah, the change background color does not work, but it's not that bad. I mean, it was able to understand the title of the website and it even put what I wrote right here, which is hello world. Now, for some reason, it was able to understand the what's up, which I understand because even I have some trouble reading it. But I mean, other than that, it is very, very impressive. I mean, obviously, this is not GPT-4 level of quality. I mean, at least from the demo that they showed, but still for a first version of this project, the result is very impressive. This is really cool. So yeah, again, although it's not perfect, the fact that this exists right now as an open source project is very, very impressive. I mean, that's really super cool. Oh, and by the way, if you're asking if this project can be run locally on your own computer, the answer is technically yes, but unfortunately you need a very, very powerful GPU with at least 24 gigabytes of VRAM. And even then, apparently it doesn't even work right now on Windows, so you might have to wait a little bit once everything becomes a little bit more easier to use and a little bit more optimized. But I mean, again, as of right now, you don't need to install anything. You can simply use the online demos that you see right here, and you can just try it out yourself for absolutely free and that's already pretty cool so yeah that was mini gpt4 which is basically the gpt4 vision model that we were promised like a month ago that you can use right now and again although it's not perfect it will definitely get way way better like with every open source project so again definitely try this out yourself and there we have it folks thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the youtube algorithm thank you also so much to my patreon supporters for supporting my videos you guys are absolutely awesome you people are the ones who support me so i can make these videos for you so thank you so much and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye